Welcome, all fellow <laughs> wannabes. <laughs> Welcome to the show. We're running with that. You did this to yourself. Welcome, all fellow wannabes. Welcome to the show. I am Gabriel Fast. I am one of your hosts. You are listening to the Wannabe Critic podcast. I am joined always by one of my co-hosts, Caleb, the ginger from New York. Caleb, how you feeling, bro? Oh, just soulless like a ginger. I'm so sorry that, you know, I had to do that to you, but you know how it goes. You know what I mean? You're my brother and I like to give you a hard time. Also joining me is one Mikey, the critical one, Collins. How are we feeling, Mikey? Pretty good. Didn't know you were going to start giving out <laughs> nicknames. But all it's right, happening. It's happening. It's happening. <laughs> It's real. Um, Caleb kind of drew the short stick on that one. Hey, I asked him. I, I Listen here, you freaking idiot. I asked him off mic if that was okay, and he was like, sure. So I took that as a resounding yes. I don't I don't care. You know what I mean? But, I mean um, I've been called that my whole life, so Yeah, it's whatever. Literally. Like, on my wife's phone, whenever you call, and whenever I see a, a phone call from you, it just says Caleb the Ginger, and it has the funniest looking <laughs> – it has the funniest <laughs> looking – uh like um profile picture that comes up and i'm every time i see it, i'm just like <laughs> that poor you can only man imagine what picture of it it, it is of yeah. me. i oh think God. you're like <laughs> like like you're like doing that scream smile thing you do you know what i mean but it's yeah yeah it's good it's good times it's good times gentlemen i'm so happy that you guys are here it's been it feels like it's been an eternity since the last time we spoke and we are here today to review the final chapter kind of in the Fast and Furious saga, if you can really even count this one as part of it, I don't know, but you um, yeah, you really can't. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna freaking tear this movie to shreds. Uh, Hobbs and Shaw. We are reviewing Hobbs and Shaw, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're along for the ride. Um, really fast, I just wanted to say that in our constant efforts and attempts to create quality content, we have branched off into several podcast feeds, or of which are available to you as the listener. Right now, you can head over to wannabecritic.com to check out those different projects, our YouTube channels, all of our different podcasts, that old jazz. Go buy a t-shirt, rep us. We would definitely appreciate it. And also, this episode is sponsored by Pop Cult, but I'll tell you about that later. Guys, don't let me forget because I totally forgot in one of the last episodes and never mentioned it. And now they probably hate me because I'm a freaking coward. But we're not here to talk about any of that stuff, gentlemen. We are here to talk about um, Hobbs and Shaw. But I actually wanted to catch up a little bit. Oh, and by the way, I have the the webcam going, the utility EOS, you know, the the Canon webcam going, so I can have better video quality. So whenever I'm, I'm going to be listening to you guys, I'm going to be turning to the right like this. That way, it kind of looks like I'm Jimmy Fallon on a talk show. You know what I mean? Huh. <laughs> it's a, it's for effect. You know what I mean? It's just it's a little bit better. But Caleb. How have you been, man? Uh, not bad. I don't really have too much to uh, complain about. I mean, I was supposed to be coming out to visit you guys, but that kind of got thrown off the rails because of yeah. COVID. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. you know, at least we're not sick and we are working and we got some cool stuff to watch. So it's fun. There you go. Yeah, we just had a nice little production meeting before this episode, which was nice. And uh, we're going to have quite a bit to share with the audience, which is good. So I don't know about if you guys are as hyped as me, but I'm pretty dang hyped. Have you been playing any video games? Oh my God, we need to celebrate. Caleb got his first freaking platinum trophy, ladies and gentlemen. His first one. I need to insert applause in through here. What did you get the pl that sweet, sweet platy on, Caleb? Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, which apparently is like one of the easiest games out there to platinum, <laughs> except for all the Telltale tell, tell games, I guess. Yeah. Um. <laughs> But uh, no, I, I had a lot of fun with it. It wasn't too difficult. I mean, I kind of had to have a guide for some of it, but it was, sure. it was fun. Yeah, I think it's one of those ones, and I'm, I'm, I've looked at the trophy list. Like, I see what it entails, you know, and, like, I, I know the most part, it's just mostly just kind of finding those lists of stuff to do, like those chore lists, you know, and just kind of hunting down the things on that list. But for the most part, it looked looked pretty straightforward. It just looked, looked time-consuming, but... From what I understand, it's a really fun ride, like to actually make that happen, you know, to get the platinum trophy. But I'm happy for you. Was it a, was it a, a gratifying experience? Whenever that platinum trophy popped, what were you, I mean, what were you feeling? Were you elated? Yeah, I think I was actually like yelling in the house, so <laughs> I was, I felt really accomplished. It made me want to go back and play other games that I have that in platinum those. So it was yeah. Cool. Uh, and it's it's one of those things that I've really tried to make a, a habit more recently of trying to get every single trophy 
you know, with whatever game I'm playing. And I've really, over the past year or so, I've really turned into like a big trophy whore. Like I won't play a game just for the trophies, but if I really like the game, then it's like, I got to get that platy, you know? And it's, it's been fun to, to do it, but I'm, I look forward to seeing what your next one is. It should be Spider-Man because we're going to be talking about that on Game Club, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely on the list. So nice. I can make that happen. Very nice. Well, I'm very proud of you. I actually just got a platinum trophy myself too the other day. Was it on a Telltale game? No, it wasn't. I, although I do have a handful of those as well because I am a big Telltale fan. But um, there was a little game that came out about which, you know, by the time we we're recording this, it's going to be months old at this point, but whatever. Um, there's a little game called uh, Star Wars Episode One Racer that came out for the Nintendo 64 a long time ago and they ported it to Dreamcast and then and I used to play it on Dreamcast all the time because I, I was a Dreamcast kid and then they have now ported it to PS4 and as soon as it came out it was like 12 bucks and I was like oh my god if this is as good as I remember it being then it's over you know what I mean so I literally sat down and I got every single trophy in a night and a half basically like I played it I got it at like Nine o'clock one night, stayed up till two, got every single trophy except for the last one that required me to get the platinum, got the platinum the next day because it was like, I just couldn't help myself. It was so good. Such a fun game. So I recommend that one, Caleb, because that's a really easy platinum to get. I would definitely check it out. But Mikey. Yeah, I think I have that game, so. Oh, do you? On um, PlayStation? Yeah. Yeah, I think I got it in a bundle with like a Bounty Hunter and some other ones. Oh, that's Racer Revenge. So that's actually the oh, PS2 sequel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. this one just came out like last week. So it's, oh. a, it's a brand new port. But definitely, and the Racer Revenge isn't like quite nearly as good. But it's still fun. Oh. But the OG, you got to do it. Episode 1 Racer. But we've been hogging the conversation. Mikey, how have you been feeling, bro? Uh, I've been feeling good. What have you been doing? You've been playing any games or doing anything worth mentioning, you freaking coward? Uh, yeah, I've been playing Spider-Man, actually, now that you guys have been talking about that. Yeah, we talked I'm a little bit, we talked a little bit about... Super close. I'm super close to getting the Platinum on that. Really? Oof. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I, it's, I, I was a real big fan of, because I recently got back on PlayStation, I was a really big fan of getting, tro like, uh, achievements on Xbox. Right. Like, and just getting as many as I could, but, like, it's different on PlayStation having the goal of one specific trophy at the end yeah it's it's kind of different because like xbox has those diamond achievements which are re usually really hard to get right but yeah it's a struggle actually to get that last that last little bit of spider-man done yeah especially if you jack around if you don't if you don't complete stuff during the main story yeah while you're going. totally i definitely know what you mean because there's definitely been those times where and there, it's kind of a, a two-edged sword because I love getting the Platinum Trophy, but at the same time, you can get a Platinum Trophy in a game and still not have 100% completed on the game. Whereas yeah. if you get, you know, like 1,000 out of 1,000 or 3,000 out of 3,000 gamer score, like you know you've done everything that the de developer like challenged you to do, basically. And I don't know, it's kind of two different schools of thought, but it is a weird feeling like getting the Platinum Trophy and like feeling like a sense of accomplishment that I never really, like, I don't know, it... I, there was a similar feeling um, on Xbox for sure. Like, there's nothing like the sound of an of an achievement popping on Xbox. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I, I I get yeah I get more I get more satisfaction out of getting trophies at this point. But maybe it's just because I've been playing PlayStation for so long now that I haven't really I can't remember the last time I even turned on my Xbox to be honest with you. But I do love Either. getting trophies. Yeah, yeah, good times. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, it's yeah. good it's good to hear that you guys have been doing well amongst all this craziness obviously we're really excited to get into um, our review of Hobbs and Shaw I wanted to mention before we get into the review that this video is sponsored by Pop Cult USA um, this whole shebang um, they sent me this dope hat um, natural light they know they uh, they told me they're like hey we we like your stuff we want to help you out um, I'm trying to get you guys stuff sent I'm, I'm trying to, you know, kind of trying to get that in the works. So developments on that in the future, just so you know. But you can use my personal code, the underscore wannabe critic, to get 20% off your entire order. It helps keep us relevant with the company and as well gives you a sweet deal off some officially licensed swag. But Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah. <laughs> let's do let's do the freaking ritual, gentlemen. Um, Caleb, I'm throwing it to you. Do you like Hobbs and Shaw? I mean, yes, it's yes. It, it's fine. It's fine. Sure. Yeah, I like it. I it's, it's, it's whatever. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my. <laughs> God dang it. <laughs> Mikey. <Sorry>. Mikey. <laughs> Mikey, do you like Hobbs and Shaw? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Sadly, sadly yes. I liked it too. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually like it's 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 like a good movie. It's it, it's fine. It was one of those things. I'm like sitting there and I'm like like one of the first scenes. Like whenever he does that weird stunt on the motorcycle, that like that weird looking slide at the beginning. I'm like, oh my god, here we freaking yeah, here we freaking was, go. Yeah. Like I almost immediately checked out. But then whenever I saw his motorcycle doing like all this cool stuff, I was like, oh, like I just for some reason it just like started to get a pass for me. I don't know why, but um, yeah, I. Let's just get into it. Let's start. Let's just go ahead and just start. Can I, I have an idea. I have an idea. Let's try something new. This movie is so over the top that I feel like it's almost a waste of time to even talk about what's quote unquote negative. Like, I feel like we should just completely subvert that entire section of the podcast and just literally just have fun and talk about what we enjoyed because this, you can't, this doesn't even fit in. Yeah. I'm okay. Like for me, like I don't have anything negative about the reality of this movie. It's a popcorn fun movie. So like everything negative that I would have to say about it is about like characters and things that they do, not like how real a transformer motorcycle with a superhero on it is. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know? So, and it's yeah. funny, it's funny you mentioned superhero because I'm like, I'm watching this and like the sequence towards the end of the movie, I'm like, wow, they've done it. They have really, you know how like you'll see a clone of a game and you're like, oh, that's obviously a such and such clone. Like this really felt like a true, like finally they've achieved it. A Marvel clone in, in a lot of ways, like with the action sequences and stuff. Are you, are you talking about when uh, the rock Captain America is holding on to the helicopter? Yes. Yes. <laughs> literally <laughs> like that whole sequence and i was like okay they're really they're they're just going for it but i go ahead. i don't understand what makes makes that guy a superhero compared to hobbs and shaw because literally they do everything he does except they're not bulletproof that's pretty much the only difference are we sure I, that they're not bulletproof yeah exactly <laughs> like they fall off a cliff at the very end like in a car in a helicopter and then like every Everybody's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, even yeah. the pilot's fine. Yeah. I, whenever I saw that happen, I was kind of sad. A normal dude. I was yeah. kind, yeah, I was kind of sad at first because I was like, "Oh my god, they killed uh, what was her name? Uh, Cat, Matt, M Matt, or Hat, H H Hattle, Hattie, H Hattie? Is that her name? I don't even know what her name was. Yeah, I, I was yeah, like, I have no, I, I have no idea what that girl was. Shaw's, yeah, Shaw's yeah. sister, which yeah, we'll, we'll get into that, I guess, but. Yeah, when, like, I'm looking it up. yeah, please do. Whenever that happened, I was like, "Oh my god, she's dead. She has to be." And then, yeah. whenever I see her, just like somehow just laying on the ground, it's like, sure, she looks a little, a little banged up. But I was like, she's got a little scar on her head. Oh yeah, I was like, it. what? Uh, Everyone, oh, everyone's fine. Head. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I it was this movie is so ridiculous, so ridiculous, and it's I'm watching it and I'm like, Hobbs would never do this. Like, Hobbs would never act this way. I try and think about, like, comparing Hobbs to, and Hobbs and Shaw to Hobbs and Fast and the Furious or Fast and Furious 5. And I'm like, it is the, a completely yeah. different person. It is not even the same dude, which, granted, you could it's say that about... Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yeah, it's, it's like... literally being The Rock. Exactly. He is literally just... They're like, it's... Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> anyways. <laughs> about no negativity? Yeah. I mean, well, like... That's what I was saying. It's like, okay, so it's going to be like that, like that. So I, I don't know. I want to have fun with this review because it's obvious that they had yeah. fun making the movie and it's easier to just kind of write it off because none of, none of the characters that we love are in this, you know, we like, we've liked Hobbs and Shaw in the past, like in their different roles that they have played. And this really just kind of felt like a hodgepodge of different elements and just slapping fast and the furious on it. And like, yeah. that's what Hobbs and Shaw is, which is fine. I, I liked this movie way more than I thought I was going to. And it just is so funny to me that there are multiple things in this movie where I was like, they ripped that out of a video game, literally. Like, there are things I'm like, okay, well, you know, there's like games that come to my mind. It's like, oh, that's totally what this is. You know, it's what it felt like. Um, 
but I don't know. It feels like they really had a fun time making it, and it just it hits different than all the other Fast and the Furious movies. So let's have fun with the review, and then you know, just no personal bias, no nostalgia attached to it. Like it just it is what it is. You know what I mean? So um, I'm gonna kick this one off, gentlemen. Um, let's talk about Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> Right, I was not expecting that. Um, Me either. And I was like, he kind of was. It looked like he was actually kind of trying to act a little bit. And granted, I haven't seen Deadpool, but it kind of felt doing? that. Yeah, it yeah. kind of felt like he yeah. brought that same energy. You know what I mean? And it's like he knew exactly what he was doing, and he knew, you know, he knew what he was getting himself into and saying yes to this role. But it was so funny and perfect, perfect casting choice, you know, for that particular character. I was, th- this movie has made me laugh more than any other Fast and the Furious movie easily. I told and you it would. Yeah, it was hilarious. I, I absolutely loved it. What you guys, yeah, how do we when feel about it? When he opened his shirt and had that like partial shoulder tattoo, I was like, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it was, it was so the funny. expression on the rocks. Oh, face. yeah. Oh, my God. It was priceless. It was so good. It was so funny. Yeah, I the, the half the best friends, but he has half of it. And he's like, yeah. Where did you even get that? <laughs> <laughs> and like the the um at the end, like those I, I almost feel like they they kind of were not parodying a Marvel movie, but there was like four end credit scenes. Right. Like three or four of them. And I was like, wow, these just keep coming. You know, and it was, I don't know, it just felt, it felt like they kind of, did you guys pick up on that at all? Like, are you getting, getting, did it feel kind of parody-ish a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've been, look, I've been saying this for a long time, that they're just trying to emulate Marvel. And this one, they're, I think they're just doing it more and they're just, it's more of a parody because I feel like this movie is like the first one that's just kind of strictly a comedy. Yeah. It's just funny throughout. And there's not like the last few fast and furious movies have been like intense in spots intentionally. And yeah. I don't feel like there was that much intensity in this movie for some weird reason. It's just like a comedy, the whole thing. Yeah. It was like Mikey made a good point off. Mikey was like, yeah, it was just kind of like a buddy cop movie. And yeah, that's exactly. exactly what it is. And yeah, I'm, it feels like I should be comparing it to something, but I'll tell you what this right now, this is not a fast and the furious movie until there's like, I don't know. I think, I think at the end of the movie, kind of like trying to tie in all of the rocks family and like having them drive all those cars in like a very fast and the furious type way, kind of insinuating like that the rock was part of like very much kind of a Dominic Toretto of sorts, like in another life, like with his dad and his family and all that stuff, like these jobs that they used to pull, like they're kind of, did you guys pick up on that? Like kind of alluding to that, those things, like was, I'm not alone in thinking that, am I? Like that is that what they were trying to kind of ship us, as Mikey says? Go ahead, Mikey. I, uh, I kind of, I guess. I, I mean, it does give him more of like a relation with Dom and like making it more believable that they can be friends, you know? Yeah. But I, I don't believe it at all personally because like it, like you were saying with Five, he's such a like to the T guy he never even says anything about having a past or anything it's like he's just been a straight cut guy his whole life so i mean that felt kind of forced to me especially having like 30 brothers were any of those like cousins or something he just said all i don't know his brothers i don't know what is with his mom she looks fine yeah <laughs> how all i'm saying is she's in pretty good shape for having like 50 samoan children i mean you'd right. think she'd be Big like dead yeah no kidding Oh my god! Well, dude, that that slipper, the slipper thing. Like she's like, you're gonna catch this slipper. I was like, I was laughing so hard to that entire sequence because it just it just fits. It's funny. Um, Reminded me of my mom. Yeah, this movie is. Go ahead. It's um. Have you guys seen the other guys? Yeah. Yeah. This it's literally that. Yeah. Fast and Furious version of the other guys. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Did you guys? Sorry, Caleb. Keep going. Sorry. No, I was just to say, I, I think it pulls it off pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Considered. Yeah. I'd agree with you. I'd, I'd have to agree with you. Go ahead, Mikey. You, you were going to say something. Did you guys catch the Italian job reference? Yes. Yeah. I loved that. That was, that was awesome. awesome. It was that was like, like oh. the most random. I didn't even realize that because I was like, I was like thinking about it till like 20 minutes ago. It's like, what was he talking about? I was like, 
oh yeah he's handsome rob an italian job yeah that i was, was like awesome. yeah i was like but but th that's the thing is are these is movies director direct italian job i don't know why i don't know are these movies that's what i was gonna say is there any connection to these There's movies somehow okay i'm gonna look it up you guys vamp oh, so boy. caleb do you come here often <laughs> I can't believe Gabe is letting us do this. We could be just like bad mouthing him the whole time. About you need practice. You need practice. Play. You know what I mean? You just you need practice. You just keep it. You vamp it right up. No, but dude, yeah. And at the end with Ryan Reynolds, like it's surprisingly easy to stab somebody with a brick. <laughs> it just pushed it right in there. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was amazing. Yeah. I think I, yeah, this movie just executes everything that it wanted to do actually really well. Which it's not it's not like great, like it's not a great cinematic movie and it's nowhere close to being like what a Fast and Furious movie like is supposed to be, but yeah. Yeah, it's a perfectly good movie. It's this is probably the first Fast and Furious movie since like probably the fourth one that I would actually enjoy watching again. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I was thinking about that after I finished it. I was like, I could I could do that again if like my wife wanted to watch it or something. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm gonna have to watch it again to justify me having to buy it because I, oh, I bought figure it out too. a way to rent it. <laughs> Dude, yeah, were you on Amazon? <laughs> no, uh, I tried uh, through PlayStation and uh, oh. through Apple, and I couldn't. I was like, gosh dang it, I'm gonna have to buy this movie. Okay, but, yeah, okay. I, you couldn't even buy it, it on Amazon fine. either. Well, and so, you know what's funny is it's on HBO Max. So if you have HBO, yeah, they only gave you the option to. Start HBO Max on Amazon. Which, dude, uh, I'm gonna do a little mini review right now for HBO Max. Hands down, hands down, the streaming service you need to have alongside Netflix. Easily, really? e easily. Really? Oh my god, it's like there's a really good chance that if you need to, if you want to watch something, or if like you, you know, like if something comes to mind, you go search for it. It's probably on HBO Max because. Kind of they've with well it's it's they've bought so many studios and like they're they've licensed out so many things like the most random things on there i i freaking love it i absolutely love it. and there's there's really good shows there's all and then cartoon network stuff is on there like it's it's awesome i'm, I'm really happy oh yeah there's a ton of stuff on there totally all of all of samurai jacks on there like all of it totally oh, wow, okay so there's a reason why this movie feels the way it does and guess why that is Italian job nope, director. Nope, it's not the Italian job, but it is the guy who directed Deadpool. Deadpool 2 is working on Deadpool ah. 3. Um, he's also did the Dukes of Hazard movie. Uh oh. director. He also did Atomic Blonde, um, the first John Wick. Oh. Like, there's oh, wow. definitely a lot there. Um, you know, oh, I think okay. David Leach, but no, there's no Italian job reference, but it would be the kind of guy to be like, okay, how could we kind of parody this? And that makes sense why it does kind of have – he literally deadpooled uh, Fast and Furious, like kind of he a did little a bit. parody within a parody. Literally. This is a parody movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like – and so that makes a lot of sense. I, I – you know, it, it's funny how you put two and two together and it equals five. Um, anyways, um, yeah. But – that whole sequence, like, with Ryan Reynolds at the end with the brick, I, I was kind of catching that while I was looking that up. That was yeah. so funny. He's like, do you know how hard it is to stab somebody with a brick through the chest? He's like, surprisingly, it's really easy. Like, it was, oh, my God, it just was so funny. But I'm um, leaving out. <laughs> I, I like how there's just shameless insertion of characters to to create Deus Ex Machina in this movie. Like with Kevin Hart, like, oh, yo, man, like yeah. that was I loved that. That was that funny. Was awesome that was so funny. Like because that whole, like that whole time they were on the plane together, I was laughing so hard. Oh yeah, was, <laughs> that whole scene was just incredible. I agree. You guys came in here with a head on a swivel. I saw it right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> how do we feel about? Okay, let me ask you this. Does the chemistry between Hobbs and Shaw work for you guys? No. It's not great. Yeah. Unfortunately. I, yeah. It doesn't it doesn't work, but it also doesn't feel forced because yeah. you can tell that they they don't think it works either, but they're they're working together. Yeah. So that's I, I can forgive it a little bit because of that. I but think, the whole time I'm just like the, I think they do need a third guy, personally. Like, if they did have a third guy, I think it would be better, personally. It's kind of, like, almost kind of awkward yeah. in some points. Because they're but... both, like, macho, macho men. Yeah. yeah. Well, and yeah. I'm, I'm kind of of the mind, too. Like, I think it is 
I don't think their chemistry is like quote unquote good, but I also think that that's kind of on purpose because they kind of hate each other, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. So that's, it's that's kind of in sense. a it's kind of in a way not supposed to work. I'm like, are these guys ever gonna be friends? Like even at the end of the movie, I'm like, oh, like they still hate each other pretty much, like, yeah. you know. And well, Which, well, go ahead. It, it when they say that they they're like brothers, it it. That's more believable to me than Dom and Brian. I hate to say that because I, I have hated on this movie for so long, but I mean, brothers fight. Brothers don't get along. Dom and Brian, even though like he was gone forever, like Brian and him were estranged, they he immediately was like, I love you. You know what I mean? And they never had another qualm. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> that's partially probably because Paul Walker died and all that drama happened. But I yeah. mean, it's so unbelievable. But here, like when me and Gabe and like Carter were growing up, like we fought all, all the, time. the time. All and hated the time. Each other. I mean, but, yeah, like, it was we like, love oh. each other, and that's just yeah. what you do when, with like brothers, you know. The love, but, yeah, and and you're you're really hitting the nail on the head to what I was kind of trying to drive home. The love hate relationship. To me, the chemistry isn't supposed to be like, oh, these guys are friends now. Like, they're definitely kind yeah. of, they have that love-hate relationship. You know, they're, they're rivals. I think that's a good way. Like, you have a like a healthy respect for your rival. And, like, everything that Hobbs is, Shaw is not, and vice versa. And, like, you know, it. I think the the two sides, but they're kind of, it's funny because they're the exact same dude. Like in two different yeah. universes, pretty much, which I think that's funny whenever, especially like I like the way in the earlier parts of the movie where you see them going separate directions as they're getting ready and stuff like that. And like, you know, um, Hobbs be walking to the right and Shaw be walking to the left and like even the 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 um, the filter on the lenses are different. And like, yeah. you know, great yeah, I loved yeah. that. I loved that that correlation. You're not correlation that. um discrepancy i think that's the right word I, i'm not sure go ahead i would Caleb. much rather have uh jason statham's morning than uh the rock's morning it seemed a lot better and more chill yeah i'm not know, eating dude. raw raw eggs and uh <laughs> drinking the beer. rocks morning every morning though you'd be jacked yeah <laughs> My only know. problem I don't need to be jacked if i look like jason statham yeah I'm, I'm, my only problem fine. though is why like i understand the point why are they waking up at 6 a.m at the same time because the UK is like, you know, eight hours ahead of us. But they're showing it side yeah, by side. It's probably just six for each of them. I, I doubt it was. Maybe he's on standard mountain time. <laughs> it's just a small thing I noticed. I was like, because I, I work with those guys, you know, from the UK. And I'm like, anytime they want to meet, it's like 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock at night for them is like 3 p.m. or something like that. Or like 4 a.m. or yeah. 4 p.m. for us. So I'm always like trying to, you know, work around those meetings and stuff like that. But that was something I immediately noticed. I was like, that's not right. But, you know, it's a, it's a, it's showbiz, you know, it, it is what it is. But, um, no negativity. Yeah. Pass. Zero. No negativity. You're, it gets a pass. This is like a bonus. This is like DLC for our main Fast and the Furious saga review. Um, true. yeah, it's a little bit of a DLC episode. Good Dude, that's a really good idea. We should have d episodes called DLC and it's like, whatever, like it is that what is, it is. That's a good idea. DLC. Wanna be Ooh. DLC. Son of a gun. Why am I, Mikey? You're f yeah, God dang, you're yeah. a God dang genius shirts. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> TM. <laughs> um, let's talk about Shaw's sister and also how there's a potential time gap similar in Tokyo Drift fashion, you know, um, yeah, did you guys catch that at the end of the movie? Um, Shaw is like pointing the gun at Idris Elba and he's like, You made me kill my brother. Like, did you hear him say that? Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah so I, 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 <laughs> yeah, so that's what I'm thinking is I wonder if this is supposed to be taking place after Fast and Furious 9 or something of that nature. And they've already confirmed Hobbs and Shaw 2 is happening. So I don't know. I feel like there's opportunity. A couple of things that I noticed. Number one, there's a really good chance this is actually after the events that happened in Fast and Furious 9 and then maybe something that happened in Fast and Furious 9, you know, because Idris Elba kind of refers to trying to recruit Jason Statham in the past. Maybe that's something we see happen in Fast and Furious 9 kind of like as a side plot. I don't know. Maybe oh, we man, see. I, hope not. I know. That's what I'm kind of thinking. But like Owen Shaw, it'd be kind of cool. It, Idris Elba is ruined in this movie, in my opinion. Um, he does nothing for me, and I love Idris Elba, but I he did nothing for me in this movie. I'd like to see him I've, kind of more intense, maybe, in the earlier movie. I don't know. Go ahead, Mikey. 
I've never been on the Idris Elba train. I mean, really, I, ever. I mean, he's he's a good actor, but I mean, all the roles he's ever done that I've seen, I've like, like it. Just, he seems like he plays the same character every time. Yeah, just, it, he's he's a guy who has an accent that is can be give you the smoldering look and be intense. That's pretty much all of his roles I've ever seen him in, unless it's like a rom com. You see, but, for me, I just see him as Charles Minor from The Office. Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> just like, he's like strong and smoldery in that one, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. I completely he, forgot he was he in like that. He threatens like he's going to beat up Michael. And I think mm -hmm. it's just the same character, but completely yeah. different universe. I yeah. had completely it's forgotten true. that he was in The Office. See, I, I see I, – I'm a big Heimdall fan from the Thor movies. I love Heimdall. Like, mm. So yeah. to me, you know, I that know he can true. he can play a dope role – but it just feels like he was trying a little too hard in this movie. And I, obviously, like, the 80s action movie thing here has turned up to about a million. And he yeah. very much is a cheesy bad guy. But I don't know. His his super suit, his super skeleton didn't really feel believable. But I have a theory. Here's what I think. I think that in Fast and Furious 9, we see that actually Cypher is the one who's actually controlling Etion. I think that would be a very believable thing. Like she's actually the one that's controlling that organization with all the super bionics and stuff like that. Like to me, that would kind of make sense. And like she would potentially want to, you know, have him Brixton recruit Shaw again or whatever. I don't know. I just, I think there, there's going to have to be an origin story either in fast and furious nine or in Hobbs and Shaw too. And I think they might go, they may go the Hobbs and Shaw two route since that's kind of its own thing now. But Mikey, I can tell you want to say something, go for it. I think it's going to be Hobbs dad. Hobbs dad yeah what do you mean it it I, I can see where you'd come in with Charlize thing but he, he never had any relation with Charlize Theron Deckard and he's Hobbs so oh. like it talked to Hobbs specifically and was like you remember at the very end is like you don't remember me you don't you can't tell who it is and then ends it oh he's talking to Hobbs and oh he never yeah had yeah, yeah. Like, through he the helicopter really knew yeah Gotcha. Never even really knew Charlize Theron's character, so I was like, "It's so gonna be his dad." Yeah, I didn't even catch that. Yeah, I've. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, I was getting stuff ready for the podcast like around that that time, but yeah, I didn't. I didn't even catch that. But yeah, totally, that would make sense. And it, in that case, it would have to be. But it, I don't think. Point is, I don't think we've seen the last of Cipher. I think we'll see. Probably, I think we'll probably see Charlize Theron again. Um, yeah. an, an affiliate next team member. I would not be shocked at all. In Fast Nine, I really hope not. I hope not. I can see it happening. God dang it, Mikey. You're already getting me salty for the next movie. Yeah. Dude, okay. One thing, one big thing I had with this movie, I mean, forget the dramatic, like, Captain America stuff with The Rock and all that. I, I'll accept that. Okay. You can be the best mechanic in the world. How do you put together a high-tech blood machine and know what you're doing and put a muffler on it? <laughs> with a 3D printer. What is that? I mean, I, I was just like, I immediately was like, he's got braids. What is yeah. happening? He's in another, a chop shop. No another, way. Another thing just about that chop shop is like, who is sending their cars literally to the other side of the world to get them worked on and then shipped back? Yeah. Like, it's some tiny little shop in Samoa. He's like, all right, this one's going to Tokyo, <laughs> and this one's going to New York, and this one's going to London. Like, you realize how far away that is? Yeah, no how kidding. Long? Okay, so we this this review had such a good rhythm and such a good cadence to it. I hope that it continues going on. Mikey, I will kill you. I will reach through the freaking – I will strangle you with my microphone wire, all right? <laughs> I will. Ugh. Yeah, no kidding. Um. So, okay, I, I wanted to talk about one particular scene that I was like, okay, there's only one way this would ever work, and it's literally because of certain exposition that was set up. So you have to have, like, the the confirmation clips, right, to get, like, the guns to work, to shoot their bullets, pew pews. I don't understand that at all. They, was it, like, a glove or something that they had to be wearing? I, th I, I think so. I think, yeah, like, the glove was encoded or something, which I've seen that done in video games before, too, and... Like that's very much like kind of like a cyberpunky thing to do, I would say. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm like very much like a futuristic, which that kind of works with the aesthetic of the whole, you know, um, Brixton thing, and you know what Etion really is and stuff like that. Like it kind of works with that, I think. But 
come on. I mean, the last like scene with like the Haka and like all the brothers like just standing up ready to do their thing. Like I was like, okay. And like the ancestral weapons and all that stuff. I was like, why, why, why can't it just be a, a brawl? Like, why can't it just be like the outsiders? Why, why doesn't anyone ever do the outsiders? You know what I mean? Like the socias versus the, you know what I mean? Like just, just make like, it happen. Each other yes. Blood. Yes, exactly. Mud and blood. Yeah. No, I just, I don't know. To me, it was kind of like, it, it was entertaining, but I was just like, okay, Michael Bay, it, Michael Bay, <laughs> Michael Bay is probably was probably watching this, going like, <sighs> <laughs> he's probably loving it, like especially whenever Jason Statham traps him in that ring of fire. <laughs> um, but anyways, I don't know. <laughs> go ahead, Mikey. I right, go, please, please, please. I don't know. I didn't understand that. I mean, if they, he, before they all got there. Uh, What's his name? It just Elba mentioned that they were all augmented. So like, does that mean that they're all bulletproof? Because like, I don't know. Because they he he was talking about all the soldiers needed to earn earn like their augmentations oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. The earn so time to earn your upgrades. Yeah. So, yeah. So they were all super soldiers and got beat up by a bunch of uh, chop shop workers. Yeah. <laughs> Samoan. Yeah, Samoan chop shop workers. Yeah. It I, it's fine. It it is what it's. <laughs> it's fine yeah stuff uh yeah I, I mean you saw those things that they were holding i mean i think those are gonna kill you whether you're you know upgraded or not yeah yeah truly yeah. it's like the, it's like the stick with a few ridges in it right yeah it's like okay guys let's let's turn this into a monster hunter movie immediately like yeah. with all those i didn't instruments. understand the end either with like where'd all those people come from like who are they like you know how like the weren't Samoans, they like they Weren't they, they all inside her her house? No, like at the very end when they thought that his brothers were beat, they had them all at like gunpoint, and then like a whole crew of like Mad oh, Max yeah. style people came rolling up <laughs> on hogs and stuff. Yeah, yeah like, I forgot about who that. Are they? He's I like, think those are hard. just like the. I think they're like, just the islanders. Yeah, the islanders. Is that they heard was? some. They heard some <laughs> shooties going on. They were like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> Hey, what's yeah, 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 exactly. I love, I love Spam Reese's. Oh. Can I have it? Oh my god, you go my sister that. in your hotel room. <laughs> you make my sister clean your hotel room. Oh my god, dude, eat not pineapple. Yeah, eat... <laughs> not pineapple. Yeah, 51st dates. Movie quote. 51st it's dates. It's not racial. I was actually reading or I was listening to Rob Schneider talk about that, and he's like, dude, that was totally improv. All of that, like that oh, whole thing that. was like. Just literally like, just kind of came to mind. About? And he said, he's like, whenever they got to the islands they were shooting on, that was actually like someone that they met. They're like, okay, Adam Sandler told Rob Schneider, he's like, learn how to be that guy because that's that's who you are in the movie. And he was like, okay. So that's where Wu Oolong <laughs> comes from. But um, awesome. is there anything that anyone – Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Does anyone have anything super that they wanted to bring to the forefront and like make sure we talk about? Because I, I, I'm, I'm pretty much spent for the most part just off the top of my head. Mikey? Something something that I really liked that I, I liked that they did because I didn't think they were going to do was they showed his augmentations because like, mm. they were like, he's built from the ground up, like but it all you see is like human parts. Yeah. But then that, that one scene where you see like his back all opened up, that like made me hurt. Yeah. Like when they started sewing him back up, I was like, okay, that was nice. I enjoyed that they actually <laughs> took the time to show you that he is actually like his insides, he's a robot. Like he is a super soldier and it's not just like, I, cause from what the, what the commercials always, I always thought it was, I thought it would be like a serum yeah. or something. And it wasn't, he's actually like built. Yeah. He's so, like, I mean, essentially it's like cyberpunk 2077, like is what it yeah. looks like, like augmented parts, like yeah, fabricated enjoyed, parts for your body. I, enjoyed that. I, I think that was, that was good. That was a good story point that needed to be pointed out. So then it, it made it that much less, it was still cheesy. But it made it that much less cheesy to where I was like, okay, that yeah, makes sense. I agree with that. And it made, I don't know, it made Etion feel like more, not real, but it kind of made them, like, because they were basically just using him as a guinea pig in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, Because, like, the, as soon as they saw that he wasn't, like, valuable anymore, like, they just basically just toss him. You know what I mean? And, like, like a tin can, pretty much. And, I don't know, I, I liked how... That that made Etion kind of available or not available, a, a lot more believable from a bad guy standpoint. It made made him more interesting. There's more interesting as as a villain, and it was like, or um, Brixton wasn't even really the real villain. Like it was actually 
this organization, you know, and once he realizes the jig is up, he's like, frick, like Hobbs and shot yeah. Hobbs and shower. Right. You know what I mean? And it is, it was cool. It was cool. What else? Um, just one thing I noticed, um, that Mikey will probably appreciate. There were no harpoon guns in this movie. <laughs> Not one harpoon gun. Well, um, well there's not a Fast and Furious movie, so yeah. Um, <laughs> also, there was only one drift that seemed unnecessary, um, and it really wasn't even unnecessary because they he drifts underneath these two tractor trailers, but then he actually turns the corner. It's not like he's drift. I thought he was going to oh, be drifting in the McLaren under yeah, the yeah, the McLaren. Yeah, I was like, he's going to drift that, and he doesn't need to. And Mikey's going to like you know harp on this but uh, no i i I thought that was the only the only part that i was like you know what i thought with this movie actually i was like up to a point i'll tell you the point i was like man this is like probably one of the most realistic car movies i've seen since like tokyo drift and then they freaking took a buggy up a rock mill ladder and then drifted it on scaffolding i was like all right yeah never mind <laughs> i was gonna make that point out the window. Like, wow. <laughs> but you know i did like a callback that they did that every fast flight i don't think every fast and furious movie had but the nos going into the engine and then it combusting and then yeah. and they're all Rawr! i loved that i thought that, that was, was cool. i was like that was a good nod and he called it uh moonshine yeah moonshine yeah, yeah that was yeah. that was funny yeah that was that was i agree that was cool i i liked a lot I liked everything about this movie because it it was okay to accept its it was okay to accept its ridiculousness because I didn't I wasn't saying to myself that it's a Fast and the Furious movie it's just another cheesy action movie and guys what have I been saying the last like few podcasts I like, know Caleb you guys got to stop with this like you know I we're only holding on to this, this nostalgia it's not a Fast and Furious movie. yeah it's so hard it's so hard so you can just look look at it look at the other movies before this one in the same light you're going to enjoy them just as much if hey i give i give in between fast and furious and hobbs and shaw in this movie it would be a negative negative 10 for me <laughs> <laughs> just because it says fast and furious presents hobbs and shaw it gets a pass there you go is that what it says fast and furious presents yeah, hobbs and shaw okay yeah. okay mm-hmm. cool cool i didn't notice that. i thought it was just fast and furious hobbs and shaw or whatever um this was fast and furious hobbs and shaw who boy yeah, I would have mm. a list, a bunch of demerits. <laughs> you get what? And what are those black dots? Demerits. Oh, demerits. <laughs> what kind of six school is this? <laughs> you get fifteen gold stars. Yeah, no kidding. Oh my god, that's good stuff. I one thing I remember what I was gonna say before I cut out originally. Um, what happened with the love story between the implied love story between Hobbs and uh, Deckard's uh, uh, Hattie? What what happened? What happened? They're they just nothing. I mean, good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I was not digging that at all. It it didn't feel, yeah. it felt like, it was one of those things like, yeah, I could, I could believe it that they're going to, you know, like get together, but only like for one night, if you get what I'm saying. You know, and that's you know it. what I would have believed more? What? Is if I just, it's actually just came to my mind. If instead of it was Deckard's sister, if it was Hobbs' sister, and Deckard was trying to get with her, oh. but like, he, like gentlemen, and then that would have incorporated having to get Hobbs' family together at the end of the movie because it was his sister that he was estranged with, kind of like how Deckard was estranged with his sister, and then I don't know, but I mean, I like I that. think I think that would have been better personally, yeah. and then you could have still. You could have introduced instead of his sister, his brother and his mother, and then his brother helps his mother get out of prison at the end, and still had that kind of cool thing with Deckard. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like Hobbs would be the more protective one than Deckard. You know? And, yeah. Yeah. I, and Hobbs is kind of a like goober. Like. Yeah. He he ain't out there like getting girls. I don't. No. Think. Yeah. <laughs> but Statham, on the other hand, he could probably get any girl he wanted because he's like slick and he's yeah. Well, and he has so much money like Hobbs that. Is- yeah. Like that scene with all the cars. He's like, someone's overcompensating. He's like, if anything, I'm undercompensating. Like, like I got money, bro. Like, don't even worry about it. Like, this is a chump change in my garage right now. I. Yeah. That yeah. would be the guy I would be worried about. I would like if 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 a guy like The Rock tried to go after my sisters, I'd be like, yes, sir. You got <laughs> Don't hurt me. <laughs> don't put right a, don't put a, don't put a brick through my chest. 
Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. No kidding. That that's I. I I think it's fine. It does what it's. I don't know. It's fine. It's it, it's it's entertaining. I understand it, and she'll probably be in the it second one. Yeah, do. it does yep. what it sets out to do. Um, there was one scene where I was like, "Oh, Mikey's gonna crap on that," but I can't remember what it was. And I was gonna say it right before my video cut out. That's was why it I didn't as take the that. helicopter? Was it as the helicopter is dragging the cars through the air? Holy crap! No, it was it was earlier. Uh, it. it was. <laughs> It was earlier in the it was earlier in the review, but I can't remember what it was, and I hate myself for it. But it was pretty early in the movie, and I was like, "Mikey's gonna be like, no." <laughs> I, I mentally, can't I I got my notebook out and was gonna take notes on this movie, but I knew that it was all gonna be negative, and I was just like, "All right, I just want to try to enjoy this." So I put my notebook away, and I I can't remember. I'm sure half of the things I was going to say negative about this movie. I, yeah. I just I watched it to enjoy it, and I enjoyed it. I had a great time. Like, it is – yeah, it is kind of funny. Really fun. As someone who's been kind of on both sides, you know, and just trying to get the podcast started and stuff like that and has been – attempting to be you know the wannabe critic or whatever for the past however long i can say it's way easier to be negative when you have the notebook and it's way it easier very... it's way easier to find those negative things so you literally have to train yourself to get the notebook out and say okay i have i can have no first of all what is this thing trying to do second of all how well does it do it how well does it work and third of all, how does it make me feel? And then conform it, you know, or can, can do, you know, do it with that. But I would say it's really hard for me. Usually the notebook comes out after I already have my thoughts put together, if that makes sense. And like, I just rattle things off the top of my head of what I noticed, what I thought about. But as I'm going through it, it's just so easy. I noticed that with like our, if you ever go back and listen to our Phantom Menace chat, we rip that movie to shreds. But I, in part, was thinking that, I mean, and I, I've, go back, I've gone back since then and watched that movie a couple of times and been like, why were we so negative? And I think it was like having the notebook out as you re as you're watching through it. It's just so easy to look for the negative stuff first before like trying to enjoy the good stuff. Cause there's a really good chance as you're writing down the negative stuff, you're missing the good stuff. So, yeah. you know, I don't know. Like that was just something that I noticed in that movie, but. And, and that happens too, when you have a preconceived uh, idea of how, what that movie is. Too. Totally. Like yeah. if you like the movie, you're probably going to be looking for the good stuff. But if you don't like the movie, if you, it's a movie like Within a Menace where most everybody like recognizes what that movie is and doesn't right. like it, you're going to be looking just for the negative stuff in it. And I think you could do that with the Fast and Furious movies too. If you easily go into a movie like, look, I don't like this movie as much as the other ones, you're going to look for most of the negative stuff. Where if you go into it like, I like this movie, it's one of my favorites, okay, here's all the things I like about it. Right. Mm -hmm. That's just – that's how it happens. It's hard to and, not be biased in that way. Yeah, and, and it really is like – and I think I, – I respect reviewers. I've really tried to master the art of saying like I, I personally don't like this movie rather than just saying this is inherently bad or this sucks or this is stupid. Saying I find it stupid or I find it – you know, very much putting like a title towards a feeling, you know. It can make it – not only does it help the conversation because you're not putting a stamp on this is inherently one way or another. It just kind of – you, you're you owning your opinion by, by saying that rather than just saying – because I think it's really easy to put this thing of, well, this was stupid because if you say this is stupid and then Caleb really likes it, then Caleb's going to feel attacked or I'm going to feel attacked you know, because you said it was stupid. But I really like the thing, but that's where the conversation aspect comes in and it's like – Here's my feelings on why I, you know, here's what I found. This is my opinion, whatever. I personally don't find this to be enjoyable, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, the notebook technique is is definitely useful. But I think it, I've learned just from experience, like keeping track of plot points and then revisiting like, okay, I'm not going to try and focus on what I, what, what I thought, but I'm going to write this thing down and talk about it. You know what I mean? What did I feel? Blah, blah, blah and stuff like that. But I, I do appreciate how you're usually the one. Because I have gotten the feedback of like, man, Mikey's really hard on those movies, and they're supposed to be fun and blah blah blah. blah. And it's like, yeah, but w we need that's, we need that, you know, like we need that because then me and Mikey yeah. or you know me and me and Caleb will just puff it up, you know, and like talk about how how great it is and blah blah. blah. And I feel like as the show goes on, like it gets better and better, you know, as far as yeah. like mixing everything up. Yeah. So that's yeah. the thing with the notebook thing with me is like. Yeah, I can find all those those little things that that annoy me. I've also seen those movies like three times each. Right. And I still like them. Right. Like it's not like I'm trying to like destroy the movie and like make everybody hate it. It's just like 
things that irritate me that I want other people to know, but at the same time, let them know that I still enjoy it. I enjoy yeah. the movie so much, I'll watch it that fourth or fifth time just right. to find those tiny things yeah. and talk about it. Totally. And then be like, I totally watch it again. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, and I think... I, I, I love that. Kind of, you know... I, I also, yeah. I do appreciate doing the no notebook theory because I like, especially with new movies, like, because I... I've only done the notebook thing with movies that I've seen that we've right. seen so far. Yeah. So it's, it's, it, it's a, it's, it's kind of a delicate, not, not a delicate it's a thing, but it's, it's first, first exactly, viewing, you know, totally. Yeah, no, yeah. I definitely know what you mean. Um, for me, it's one of those things too. And, and this is kind of getting into the whole fast and furious, you know, wrap up is there's, there's been several of these movies where I was like, you know, I don't want to watch this again. I don't think I yeah. do want to watch this again. Why? Why do I feel that way? And then it's like, yeah, but these movies are supposed to be ridiculous. And it's like, yeah, they are. But there can be such a thing as, yeah, this is supposed to be ridiculous, but it's just not that fun to watch. Or it's just not that it's too cringy. Or it's like, man, this is stupid. Like, It's stupid, you know. And that's why I think why I was so hard on just a couple of them. But I, I feel like for the most part, we really gave these movies fair like scores. And I mean... Whenever it comes to yeah. bias, I mean, I feel like the three of us are just about as biased as you can get. Like the love and the critique of these movies and the desire to want to be hard on them because they 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 are great. Like, I think that's that's a fun conversation to have. And like, I feel like as reviewers, it's been like a really or, you know, as someone who as enthusiasts of the the movies, you know, it's been a fun like little training exercise to kind of flex those those skills of why do I like this thing and why do I why do I like this thing and do the rewards that are attempted towards me, like do they pay off like in certain ways? And I think this movie is a payoff and it, and it is a positive at the end of the day. And um, I think it, the the last movie is almost like a primer for just how ridiculous this movie is. It's like, okay, I don't even, I don't even want to talk about the negative things. It's the first time I'm watching it and it's it's fine. It's fun. It's a fun movie. You know what I mean? At the end of the day. So I mean, do you guys have anything to add to that? Like what I anything I just said? Blah blah blah. Or just pretty much overall agree. We have another review to do, so I'm trying to like, you know, scoot along because I know Caleb's an hour ahead, but um well if you guys do you guys have anything else you want to say before we review the score the bad boy? Not really. I mean the only other thing is just one specific scene I liked, and it's when they're breaking into the uh like compound in Russia and uh, they both take separate doors. Oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, Hobbs is just dragging the guy across the floor. <laughs> so like, and uh, then uh, um, Shaw has to like fight through like 10 guys and then he has to go through each one of them to like get their eye to like, um, uh, uh, their eye to like, Matt, yeah. just, like open the door. I, I like that. I thought it was just a funny scene. Yeah, it was. I don't know. It was kind of funny. Like, I got I got Charlie's Angels vibes from this movie a little bit, like old school Charlie's Angels, like from the early two thousands a little bit, because it was just, I don't know, just kind of like the right amount of cheese in a lot of ways, and like you just yeah. you just you there's no way you could take it seriously, you know. And I think I think the movie does a good job of what it's supposed to do. So. It's time to score this bad boy. The classic scale. The classic scale of enjoyment on a scale of 1 to 10. How would we rate Hobbs and Shaw? Mikey, I'm going to throw it to you. I was looking at the reviews on online, and I don't think it got fairly reviewed. Because, like, the meta, meta score and then, like, the, the critic score are, like, 60s. Like, that's really low. I mean, yeah. for, like, a movie that's that knows, like... It's it, like I'm kind of talking like Caleb here, I guess. It's like it's a movie that knows it's not serious. Yeah. You know, and then like a lot, a lot like the other Fast and Furious movies. But like in this, it's kind of in its own world. Yeah. So I don't agree with it being like a 60, but I'd probably give this one like uh, I would want to say eight. But I, honestly, I'd probably give it like a 7.5. I mean, because it was super enjoyable, but it was by no means a bad movie. Yeah. There was some parts where I was like, okay, all right. Right. But, like, I, I laughed several times out loud. I did not expect to do that. And just, like, it, it, it surprised me a lot. Yeah. So I really enjoyed it more than I ever thought I would because I, I, I waited so long to watch this movie because I always thought it was going to be awful. But 
yeah, I, th- I feel like a 7.5 for kind of a, a standalone film, but that is kind of tied to a, a different franchise. I, I think that's a pretty fair score. Yeah, I'd have to say so too. I think you're right on the money. That's 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 definitely fair. Caleb, what do you think? Um, I mean, I'm actually right there with Mikey. I was going to give this a 7.5 too. Um, yeah, I I think that this movie, I mean, it's not it's not like crazy good and it's not even like crazy memorable, but it sets out to do what it wants to do good. It's probably super rewatchable and uh yeah, I had a fun time with it. It was good. Nice. I like that. I, I'm right there with you guys, actually. 7.5 for me as well. Um, I think that I've, we've never agreed on a score. That's wild. Um, that's that's kind of funny. Uh, to me, it's one of those things where, you know, we talk about like DC obviously trying to emulate like things that Marvel had done. Right. I feel like at this point, any action series when Caleb has said this m- multiple times, you know, is trying to do this. I feel like this is the best version of that. I think I've seen ever that's not an mcu movie um it's better this movie action wise and like just kind of action movie wise i think is right up there with you know it's very much a poor man's mcu standalone movie is what it feels like to me um and i i really enjoyed it i thought it was i i thought it was really fun and that's what it was trying to be and i thought it did a good job so 7.5 for me as well so Wow, I can't believe we've done it, gentlemen. We have gone through every Fast and Furious movie. Can you freaking believe it? It's been quite the journey. Kind of sad. This is our, I know it is a little sad. This is the first project that really, like, you know, the Wannabe Critic podcast has really completed. Like, this is the first pop project that's come to completion in the past eight months, which is, cre- which is crazy to me. Um, which, Mikey, you joined. You joined, well, no, me and Caleb. Me and Caleb did the Star Wars movies, so yeah, I guess. I was gonna say you guys did the Star Wars stuff. But you know, whenever you have two people, it's it's way more fun to have, you know, more people on. And it's been I don't know about you, Caleb, but I've really enjoyed having Mikey on, you know, to, to become yeah, part of the show. Awesome. And it's been kind of funny because I really just kind of you know I kind of threw you guys in the deep end a little bit, and that's what a lot has been happening is kind of just like throwing stuff at the wall to see what sticks. The past eight months. And, you know, I'm glad we've done it because we've come up with a format that works good, that we enjoy. We have a good chemistry. Things are getting better with each episode. And it's just been a lot of fun, you know. And we we hope as you, you know, you as the listener, we hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. Um, we definitely appreciate the support. So, gentlemen, thank you very much. I look forward to many more projects with you. So, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you stay tuned because uh, by the time this comes out, well, by the time this comes out, you already know what we're doing. So definitely stay on board for that. So we're uh, we're very excited to we're very excited to be doing this. So thank you so much. Don't forget that you can get in touch with us at geeklybyweekly uh, one at gmail.com. If you don't want to go to the email, you can find us at the website at wannabecritic.com. So we appreciate you tuning in and we appreciate you par- preparing yourselves for a plethora of hot takes and potentially unpopular opinions. We will see you next time. Say goodbye, gentlemen. Adios, amigos. Goodbye, gentlemen.